Okay, we're up to our final presentation. And the lesson for this one, our lesson, our innovation lesson number seven is that passion matters, right? Passion really matters, particularly if you have an entrepreneur who comes from an area that they deeply care about solving problems in, where they have a great deal of experience. Passion matters no matter what you're doing in this space, but particularly if you can <coughs> capture uh, the skills and the background to solve a problem, there's incredible power. So with that, I'd like to introduce Miro Salam from 3108. Sunday morning in a small rural town in Michigan. And John is in his car talking to his daughter who is on her way to a volleyball tournament. And that's when the call drops. She tries to call him back, but she couldn't. And he tried to call her back, but he couldn't. And what's interesting is that everyone else on this bus just dropped their calls. And the next week at the same place, at the same time, the same thing happens again. This is a mystery. What is the cause of the problem? What could possibly be happening on a Sunday morning that would cause other people to drop their calls? Well, it turns out it was a church. The church, every Sunday morning, would ring the bell, turn on the microphone, which happened to be on a channel that interferes with cell phones in the area and it causes them to drop their calls. Now, this carrier is our customer. And only a few days after integrating our software, they were able to solve this mystery. And all they had to do was go back to the church and ask them to change the channel. It's a very inexpensive solution, and those customers that were dropping their calls could have otherwise churned, but today, they are happy customers. And these are the kind of problems that we are passionate about solving. And we make it incredibly easy to identify and diagnose network problems by using advanced visualizations like this. If I tell you that red is bad, red is interference, I'm confident that any of you today could have solved this mystery. 3108 is an engineering company that is using cloud SaaS to help carriers monitor and optimize their LTE wireless networks. You know, in a million years, I would have never thought that I would be standing here before you today. Because a year ago, I was an engineer at Ericsson. I was a subject matter expert in LTE. I was a technical advisor to both Verizon and AT&T. And I played a key role in the deployment of LTE for both carriers in major cities like Los Angeles, Seattle, St. Louis. And I spent my career fixing problems like that church story. And I also suffered. I suffered because we used basic software to manage and operate multi-billion dollar networks. And I got tired of my desktop looking like this. But that was my pain. And as part of the Innovators program, we wanted to validate that this is pain that's shared with other engineers, and more importantly, with CTOs and SVPs who are the economic buyers. And so we got out of the building, and we interviewed over 50 engineers and CTOs and SVPs, and we, and we were able to validate that the pain is not only with the engineers, but it's even deeper with the CTOs. In fact, they were even willing to join our team to help us. Oh, I forgot to show that slide. <laughs> so there you go. In fact, they were even eager to join our team to help us so solve those pain points. From the CTO of Sprint to the CTO of Leap Wireless, and most notably the president and CEO of the Competitive Carriers Association. Today, our team does not only have deep roots in the industry, but also deep roots in technology from Amazon Cloud Services, Ericsson, and even deep roots in human behavior and neuroscience. But there's something else that we have to validate, and that we can actually sell to carriers. And so we went out and we sold to two carriers. By the way, one of which is a displacement of a previous generation software that's made by the largest vendor in the industry. And we were told that our software is far more superior than anything in the market today. 
and we were, we were able to close the sales in three to six months. And let me tell you how we did that. So we went to a carrier, and we told them that we would use a SaaS model which is, by the way, very disruptive in an industry that's used to perpetual license agreements because it fits right within the budgets of the local offices. So it doesn't have to get approval from business units. It doesn't have to get approval from top-tier executives. We didn't have any agreements with headquarters, which makes it for much shorter sales cycles. And on top of that, we're able to integrate our software in less than a day, which means that they can reap the benefits of the software very quickly. And they can solve mysteries like that mystery with the church. So today we're integrated into two carriers, processing their data, and we're helping them save one day every week. What used to take them one day a week, a week today takes them one minute. And we're helping them use the resources much more efficiently, because there are simply not enough engineers today to solve all the problems in the wireless networks. And we don't help them predict why their customer churn. We know why they churn. They churn because of QoS, quality of experience. And so we help them reduce customer churn by improving the quality of experience of those customers. Today, LTE networks, the cost of operating them is 19 billion, and in three years, it'll be 90 billion. And that's partially because the devices on those networks are no longer only people, but they're also connected cars, your shoes, your watch, your clothes, farms, medical devices. And software in the industry is simply not keeping up. And this is Vinod Kosla making that same exact point a couple of months ago at the Open Networking Summit. It was down the road here. And here he's saying that the way we configure and provision networks hasn't changed since 1996. And the way we monitor and optimize wireless networks also hasn't changed until today. So today we're helping mo carriers monitor and optimize their wireless networks more effectively. But our algorithms can also help them analyze, fix, and communicate network problems in real time, in one place, and, it, and we make it at their fingertips. So this is an industry that's huge, and it's ripe and ready for disruption. And as part of the Innovators program, we went out of the building, we validated, we invalidated, and today we're only more fueled and more excited and more motivated in what we're doing. Oops, I think I just... By the way, these photographs are real from customer locations. And this is our biggest fan. I'm Mira Salem, thank you very much. All right. Wow, wow, wow. That's fantastic, Mira. Great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, questions from the panel, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah. Oh. Good question, John. Oh. Uh, go ahead, Martin. Yeah, Mira, I think it's a, uh, a great solution. You are addressing two pain points, which is customer experience, which is great, and I think uh, I would addressing churn, and that's helping them reduce that. So great, great problem, great solution. So what's next? Uh, you've got a couple of telcos that are um, you know, piloting right now. We'd like to give you great feedback from them. So what are your next plans? Okay, so the question is what's next? Uh, right now we have early adopters. Um, we want to make sure that they are very happy with the value proposition that they're receiving. We want to dig deeper, and we still have a lot of work to do. I mean, there, there's, there are so many things that are broken. There's a lot more value that we can provide. So we want to dig deeper. We want to provide more value, and we want to create a scalable product that we can take to even more carriers and solve even more problems. So that's our focus right now. Questions from the side? Uh, great solution. Um, you mentioned the $91 billion of spend. Yes. Out of that, how much do you believe is your... TAM, so to speak, your, your piece of the market. Ten That's billion. number one. Okay. The other question is, do you see applicability of this in enterprise Wi-Fi as well, which is exploding? Yes. Um, so to answer the first question, network monitoring itself is a $6 billion market. But uh, we know that carriers are spending over $2.5 billion only to understand the quality of experience of their subscribers. And so when you look at how that can cascade, it goes into $10 billion. Now, uh, the second question was about it potentially going into enterprise and other markets, right? 
And that is also possible, but our focus today and right now is on improving the, the experience for the carriers. Because it ultimately impacts everything else. And I understand you're also talking about probably Wi-Fi offloading, which also impacts carriers, and so that's definitely something that we're looking at. And, and how dependent is the solution on vendor-specific equipment, mm -hmm. like base stations? Uh, Love it, yeah, yeah. So the answer to that question is all vendors have to follow 3GPP protocol. And from that perspective, it, we're not dependent on the vendors themselves, but we're dependent on the protocol which everybody has to follow. Great. Any more questions? Yes. Question over here. Uh, just okay. a quick question about data security. So obviously data security is a huge issue in general, right? right? Um, how did you go about addressing those types of concerns in a SaaS solution? Great question. Okay. So whenever you talk about cloud, I mean, security is always a concern. Um, but today we know that we can take security measures to make sure that clouds are secure. Uh, you know, what's interesting is when we first started this, we, our, our first assumption it was that uh, there's no way a carrier would say, yes, put my data on the cloud. Uh, but uh, we invalidated that. We realized that carriers are actually willing to do that. And not only small carriers, but even larger carriers. And so as long as we have security measures properly uh, added to the, pro to, the, uh, to, to the value proposition, it hasn't been a problem. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Well, fantastic okay. job, Miro. We've really enjoyed having you in the program. Thank you. Here's your certificate and a little gift. And I, I must you. say, you know, to all the teams, I, I kind of feel like a father. Every one of you did, a, I think, a fantastic job, not only in the program and all the hard work, but today's presentation. So could we give all the teams a, a warm hand for the great team? <laughs> really good job. I do want to invite you all to stay. Um, we're just going to wrap up in a few minutes here and network, and you can go talk to the teams. And we have some food outside. But before we do that, I do have one further announcement today. I said earlier, you know, we have two programs, the Innovators Program. This is our first cohort through. And we select a very broad range of companies to work on this uh, validated entrepreneurship, this evidence-based entrepreneurship. And I think you saw that here today. Some of the companies that come through may fit into our investment thesis for seed funding, the next stage of funding. And I do want to announce today 3108 is going to join our seed fund going forward. So thanks for joining that. Thank you.